one-on-one -on -one with the controversial former Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio on this edition of Politics. I'm Larry King. Joe Arpaio, the often controversial former sheriff of Maricopa County, Arizona, is back in the public eye, running for the U.S. Senate seat, being vacated by Jeff Flake, a frequent critic of Donald Trump, who, by the way, gave a full and complete pardon to Sheriff Arpaio after a contempt of court conviction. So does Arpaio expect Trump to campaign for him? Let's find out as Joe Arpaio joins us from Phoenix. Why are you running, Joe? Well, you know, I still have some life left, Larry, just like <laughs> you do, and I'm not going to surrender. Uh, one day uh, you'll find out the real story. It was a misdemeanor contempt of court, same as a barking dog. So I'll be getting into the uh, bias of the uh, federal court and the Department of Justice very soon. But uh, I want to keep doing uh, what I can to to uh, defend and help the people of Arizona and also to support the uh, president's policies agenda. Uh, and I'll be doing a, a one-termer. that will be six years, and the president and I will probably be leaving at the same time. Now, many in your state, you know this, Joe, longtime Republican donors, they're publicly expressing concern that you bring some baggage and that if you win the nomination of your party, the party could be defeated in November. How do you react to that? Well, first of all, I've been around a long time, Larry. I've uh, I had the fortune uh, to uh, uh, deal with you over the uh, years, and you've always been a fair guy. Always respected you. So I like to think that the people of Arizona and this country respect this uh, sheriff. I've uh, been sheriff 24 years, longest in the history of Maricopa County. Plus, you know my history with the federal government all over the world. So I have a lot to offer to go to Washington, not be a rubber stamp, uh, but still, uh, since I won't be running again, uh, I'm not going to make a career. So I don't have to be raising money the minute you get elected and dealing with lobbyists. So. Uh, uh, I still uh, want to get something back. Uh, I have a lot of great ideas, and uh, that's the way it's going to be. Okay, you've been encouraged by others to drop uh, drop out in favor of Kelly Ward, a Tea Party favorite, Martha McSally, a member of the Congress who, and she's the preferred candidate of uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. You think it's going to be rough running against them? You know, I don't uh, go against my opponents. I always run a positive campaign. I always go to the people. I don't have people to endorse me, although presidents, guys running for president, governors always want my endorsement. So I don't ask for endorsement. People know who I am. Uh, I'll compare my 58-year uh, resume uh, serving my country uh, versus my opponents. Uh, but uh, so I go on my resume, what I've done, my common sense, and uh, uh, what I feel I can bring uh, to our people here in Arizona and, and to the country and to the president. Do you expect, I know you don't ask for endorsements, but do you expect President Trump to endorse you as he endorsed more in Alabama? You know what? Uh, uh, I was with the president from day one, you know, in July of 2015. Yeah, I I predicted I, I still I have great uh, uh, confidence and I, he's my hero always will be not because of the party and I didn't ask for that that was a little misdemeanor contempt of court I'm not going to get into all of it right now but you'll know very soon what the backdrop was on that so uh, I support him uh, I know what he's going through is the same thing I'm going through I have gone through uh, so I support him I won't be a rubber stamp. If we have any problems, I'll go in the back room with him and we'll discuss those problems. But do you expect him to endorse you? I have no idea. Uh, I'm not asking for it. Uh, but, you know, if he did, it'd be an honor. Uh, but uh, uh, well, that's a decision he has to make. He's got uh, big problems uh, in Washington fighting the bureaucracy and the swamp and everything else. So I don't know what deal making and what's going on uh, with him and uh, other elements like Congress, Senate, and so on. Do you like, uh, do you dislike being compared to Judge Roy Moore? 
I don't even know what the con connection is. Well, they here. say you have the same political opinions as Judge Moore. You, uh, you don't see any comparison. What, what political thing? I just uh, enforcing the laws. I've been around a long time, uh, and enforcing the, what I took an oath of office to do. So I haven't been. I'm not a one-issue guy on All illegal right. immigration. Let's get into some issues. Uh, the Russia investigation. Do you support any effort by the president to fire Robert Mueller? I can't make that decision right now. Uh, uh, he's going through situations that I am going through in, in indirectly that affects what's going on in Washington, his situation. So I'll be talking about that very soon. Uh, so I don't know. He's. Uh, we should never underestimate the president. Uh, he's pretty good at what he does, and we'll see uh, what decisions he makes. I do know, and I think everybody else knows, he's not uh, bashful. If he has to make decisions, he'll do it. So this is something I can't comment. I don't know all the details. Okay. I know a few of the details of that situation. Do you support a border wall? I support a border wall. I have because of my... Uh, what, uh, 55 years fighting the drug traffic uh, in Mexico. I've been all over the world. I think we have to keep the drugs out uh, coming in from Mexico. We have an epidemic. So I support the wall, not just for illegal immigration, to keep the drugs out of our country. I think that's very critical these days. Would you have voted for the tax cut? Tax cut is great. That's great. People now... Uh, are spending more money. Uh, I'm not saying a perception. I'm sure they're going to get the money, but the economy is going is going great. Stocks and bonds are going great. Uh, so uh, he's done a great job, but sometimes he doesn't get the credit. Uh, but um, he'll continue to do a good job as time goes on. Do you favor legalization of marijuana? No, I don't. Uh, I, I do. I wish there was something more we could do with the medical dispensaries to help our veterans, people who are sick. I still can't understand why you can't go to a drugstore on a prescription and get this, this type of uh, drug. Uh, but uh, I, I, uh, the medical dispensaries, I, I kind of support it if it can help the, uh, uh, the uh, sick people, but I don't uh, support uh, using or selling uh, marijuana uh, across our nation. Actually, it's against the law. It's against the federal law anyway. Right, the president's infrastructure plan, it, it's a major plan, but it would put a lot of burden on Arizona taxpayers. Do you favor the infrastructure plan? You mean building our bridges and yeah. the highways? Yep. Of course I favor well, that. Arizona would have to pay its load. Well, you know, it's very important, these highways, byways, bridges, and so on. This is our great country. we got to keep it going. We give billions away to foreign countries. Maybe we ought to start using that money to help our own country. And it's very important to uh, keep the highways going and the bridges, you name it. So I'm for them 100 percent on that one. It puts people to work, too, by the way. You favor funding for opioid addiction treatment. Yeah, of course I do. Of course I do, after my 50, 55 years all over the world fighting the drug traffic. We have to do something, Larry, to destroying our nation. But you and I, we've lived through this throughout our careers and years about the drug traffic. Everybody talks about doing something, and still we have uh, drug traffic out there after all these years, so we have to do something different. And um, I'm sure there's one guy who could do that as the president out of the box. He has different uh, opinions than, than the normal bureaucrats, you know, and how about, politicians. How about the dreamers, Sheriff DACA? Should they be have a path to citizenship? That's a tough one, Larry. Why? Uh, it's a tough one, but uh, I have my own idea that nobody will listen to. Uh, what is but it? I, well, I figure we ought to deport them when you, you come across uh, uh, the, the dreamers, send them back where they came from, because uh, you and I go back to President Kennedy, uh, the Peace Corps, where uh, volunteers went up in the mountains, 
Uh, I would like to see the Dreamers go back to their country and be ambassadors for our country, pass the word out, and also learn their own country. And then eventually, maybe six months, uh, send them back uh, across the border, give them uh, the green card, and uh, won't have to worry about amnesty or anything else. So I think it's a win-win situation, but nobody wants to talk about it. But I they, will. They did come here. They didn't, it wasn't their decision. They came with, they were five years old, six yeah, years old. Yeah, I know, old. but it's, yeah, I know it's still a violation of the law. So um, let's see what happens. I, I wouldn't bet on the decision, Larry. I wouldn't bet on the Congress coming up with a decision. They haven't done it for 20 years. Every time there's an election, they get around making a decision on illegal immigration. So I wouldn't bet on this one either. So you would have the Dreamers go back and be like a, a Peace Corps for America in Mexico? Yeah, we have religious groups that go over there on missions. They go over there. They don't get paid or anything. And they... Uh, and it's great to have all our young people to go back and act as ambassadors and mainly to look, find out what country they came from. They don't even know where they came from. So I think it's a win-win situation. If I get into the Senate, I'm going to keep pushing that because I don't think anything's going to be settled uh, this time around. I may be wrong. Should John Kelly resign? I'm not the president. Uh, I'm not going to get into the bureaucracy uh, of the White House. I know most of the people. I've worked with them when I was helping them on the campaign. Uh, so uh, I just don't like the president being, uh, uh, you know, controlling, uh, try to control uh, people to talk to him. I've always had an open door policy with me. Anybody can talk to me. So why can't the president talk? Uh, to some people that he wants to talk to and not being blocked out. But, you know, that's the bureaucracy. Once you got the power, you try to isolate the boss, and, uh, and uh, that situation occurs. There's nothing new going on, but I don't know about the uh, general. I never met him. Why, why do you want to do this, Joe? You're 80, how old are you, 85, 86? Hey, Larry, come on. Hey. You shouldn't ask, you don't ask me that question because you're 84. Yeah. Why, do, why are you still working? Well, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to go to Washington. It's cold there, Joe. Yeah, I, you're, I understand, Larry. <laughs> but uh, but I, since you asked me my age, so what? We, yeah, uh, I agree. But, I mean, but you want to serve, obviously. You could just relax in Phoenix and take it easy. Well, this is a big sacrifice on my wife. Uh, I've been married 60 years. She came down with cancer during uh, my court trial. Oh, I'm and, sorry to hear that. And, and always watching the president. She loves Trump. I told Trump that. He's called my wife several times to see how she's doing. All these other presidential candidates that I campaigned for was their honorary chairman. They forgot how to spell my name once the camp, you know, once it's over. Joe, always great talking to you, and I'll see you in Arizona next month. Thank you. Thank you. We're back with our political panel after the break. Stay right there. Uh, politicking, continuing the political discussion, let's spend some time with our panel. Amy Holmes, political analyst, former staffer to Senate Majority Leader Bill Frist. And Nate Lerner, executive director of the Democratic Coalition and creator of the Boycott Trump app. They are both at studios in New York. Amy, we'll start with you. 
We just spoke with the former Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio, who's running for the open seat in, in Arizona. Many in the Republican establishment are worried that they might have another Roy Moore situation. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think Trump would endorse him? Well, I don't know if uh, the president is going to endorse uh, 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 the sheriff, uh, Arapaio, who is very controversial and certainly someone who has national name ID. I don't know if the folks of Arizona necessarily like all the tactics, tactics that he's taken. I think we're going to have to see, and we're going to have to see how he campaigns and what kind of promises he makes to his constituents. Nate, we're happy to welcome you to Politicking. A third White House official resigned after being told he wouldn't qualify for full clearance. It was National Economic Council George David Banks. What are you, and now, of course, we got the Rob Porter situation. What's your reaction to all that's going on in the White House, Nate? It's, it's very indicative of the chaos that we've seen since day one. Uh, this White House has been incredibly embarrassing, uh, a national disgrace, if you will. If you've seen just the revolving door of individuals coming in and out who are woefully unqualified um, and borderline dangerous, as we saw with Porter. And many of them yeah, don't, don't even qualify for security clearance, which is incredibly disconcerting. And it's what happens when you elect a leader with no previous political or government experience whatsoever, uh, where you get the Trump administration. Amy? Uh, well, we just heard a very partisan spin on the situation, uh, ignoring the fact that Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump's competitor in 2016, had her own problems with mishandling classified information. If you want to talk about what's dangerous to the country, but she's a not lot of president, voters, Amy. many devoters, decided that Hillary Clinton uh, could not be trusted. Even her own campaign manager, Amy. Jennifer Palmieri, said during the course of that campaign that she had a big problem with trust. I don't mean as to interrupt, as... Amy, but she's oh, not sorry. president. No, but I was just re re responding to okay. the very partisan take that we were hearing on the White House. I'm very concerned that, uh, at the very least, the chief of staff was aware that Rob Porter, for example, uh, had a lot of problems in his background. And it seems to me that when you work at the White House, that's an enormous honor. And the very first thing you should be thinking about is serving your fellow Americans. And the chief of staff, Mr. General Kelly, I'm afraid to say, seemed to put his own interests in having a staffer that he liked ahead of the interests of the American people. And I'm kind of maybe leaning toward the side that maybe he's got to go. I'm not sure. I need to know more about it. Well, Nate, uh, Vice President Pence gave him a ringing endorsement. I think, I mean, Kelly, I think he needs to stay. Um, I don't agree with all of his policy stances, but he's a strong leader. He's organized. He's, you know, diminished the chaos a bit in the Trump administration, much more so than it was. Um, he's someone I, I trust a bit more to make uh, reasonable decisions with our in regards to foreign policy and our military. I think he's, uh, you know, really made sure that the president is receiving more accurate news and reports as opposed to a lot of the, the fake and misleading information he was getting beforehand. And again, he's not my favorite person. He's not who I would love to have there, but he's a lot better than what we've seen previously in this administration, which has been in utter which chaos. Which is interesting, Larry, because we just heard Nate say that the White House was a disaster and full of chaos, and now he's praising the chief of staff. Uh, I think there's a lot it's, of It's still in chaos. It's just getting better. To, I think there's <laughs> exactly. a lot of shakeout that needs to go on. And weirdly, Nate and I are on the opposite sides when it comes to the chief of staff. If the chief of staff is being told that he has a staffer who has not one, not two, but three people accusing one of his closest aides of despicable behavior. Um, first of all, I just think that should be disqualifying. But also, you would know that that would reflect poorly on the President of the United States. As I say, I'm not ready to say that I think that the chief of staff should go, but I'm leaning in that direction. All right, Nate, do you think uh, President Trump should sit down with Robert Mueller? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's what the majority of Americans want. Uh, it's his responsibility as uh, a public servant to, you know, answer for his potential crimes. And it would really address a lot of the questions that are still up in the air in regards to this investigation. And he said he wants to. So, you know, the president claims to be a man of his word, so he should follow through on that. Um, will he? I doubt it, but it would be very, very nice to see. And I think he owes it to the American public. Do you think, Amy, he should... 
Uh, Larry, you've talked with a lot of lawyers on your show. All of them tell you that the President of the United States should not be sitting down with Mueller, that it's a perjury trap, that Mueller already has on record what he would want to then confront the President with, and if the President's uh, statements don't comport precisely with what he has, then he can say the President wasn't, wasn't being entirely forthcoming. And we know this President. We know Donald Trump. We know that he is inexact and imprecise with his language. And I just heard uh, Nate saying something about potential crimes. Well, so so far, we haven't seen any. What we, we know have two, from we have two the guilty act pleas okay, to the hold FBI. on, Nate. Let me finish. Let me finish. What we know is that Michael Flynn, the National Security Advisor, was speaking with a Russian agent during the time of the transition, which all people agree was completely appropriate. And during those discussions that were taped, he then was asked by Robert Mueller to explain them and discuss them. And what he, he said to the FBI did not comport with what they had on tape. So many people came to the conclusion that that interview was more of a perjury trap. Would you want to then do that to the President of the United States? Many lawyers, including Alan, Alan Dershowitz of Harvard Law, says that's ridiculous and irresponsible and not good for democracy and certainly uh, creates constitutional issues. Nate? So, first of all, we've had four indictments in the Russian investigation right now, two guilty pleas to the FBI. So, to say, you know, there's nothing there is completely inaccurate. Uh, you know, there's, it's very clear Mueller has something. And, and it's funny, to call it a perjury trap, you know, that, that implies, therefore, that Trump is then guilty of something. So, you know, if he's coming into... Well, that's what you're saying, If he's saying, coming into a meeting concerned actually. about... If he's coming into this interview concerned about perjuring himself, then he's likely guilty of something. So you can't have it both ways. Either he's innocent or he's guilty. Amy. Guilty of what exactly, Nate? That, that's what everyone keeps asking. Exactly. Guilty of and what? And so far, the investigation, which was intended to investigate Russian meddling, meddling into the election, what we've discovered is that the Clinton campaign and the DNC hired Fusion GPS to hire Christopher Steele, a British agent, to get information from the Russians to smear Donald Trump. So if you want to talk about collusion, it seemed who, to be happening to most with, aggressively on the other side. Nate, that's been that's been very well covered. Uh, that Christopher Steele was never hired by Republicans. Uh, Fusion GPS was. Republicans dropped it in the primary, then Democrats picked it up, and in the course of that, Christopher Steele was then hired to go and collect Amy. information, which he did from Russians, who were very likely, very unreliable FBI sources trying said, to spread disinformation. The FBI I mean, it's not said, that big of a deal. It, the FBI said it doesn't care who the information comes to them from, they follow up. So it doesn't Steele, matter yeah. who brings them the right. information. Right, so here, here, Larry, here's what's really interesting about that. In the FISA court application, the FBI did not make clear that this information was coming from Christopher Steele, who was hired matter? by an opposition campaign. They did not make that clear. I'd be very interested, A, to see the FISA application, and B, to know the opinion of the judge now that all of this, all of this has been revealed, or much of it, to the American people. Uh, the FBI has said, or at least memos have said, that they relied very much on a dossier, which we now know was a partisan document meant to Nothing. smear and undermine the opponent uh, of the Republican Party. I'm trying to a couple of other bases. Nothing seems to affect Trump with his base. His personal lawyer now says that Trump paid 130000 of his own money to a porn star who allegedly had a sexual encounter with him. How bad is this, Nate, or why doesn't it blow up him as a, as a, as a public figure? I mean, this is very damaging, is it not? It's, it's incredibly damaging, but I think it would have been more so during the election. At this point, people are numb to these kind of scandals, which really tells you a lot about this president uh, and the kind of man that he is. It's, it's absolutely disgraceful. Uh, but I think at this point, you know, we have larger concerns to worry about. We have, uh, you know, a president and an administration that's under investigation for collusion with a foreign adversary. Uh, we have a president that's, you know, trying to tear down our democratic institutions uh, while we have to stand on the sidelines. And we have a huge election coming up in November where, you know, we have potential to make tremendous gains in the House, and that's what Democrats need to stay focused on. Um, the now, story is, is unfortunate, but it, it, it's, unfortunately, it's not going to blow okay. up quite as much as it should. Amy, how do we solve the DACA thing? Why can't this be resolved? Oh, gosh, we're shifting resolved? to immigration. Wow. Well, Why um, can't this be resolved? 
Well, that's a really interesting question that I worked for Bill Frist, you know, during the 2000s when they tried to do immigration reform. Unfortunately, the other side was torpedoing, torpedoing it because it seemed that they wanted an issue more than they wanted a solution. Uh, the president of the United States, Donald Trump, the one that Nate seems to feel is, you know, uh, illegitimate in some way, uh, despite an election. Uh, the president has said he's happy to legalize, uh, to create legalization and a p path to citizenship, by the way, for DACA recipients and also for millions of people who would qualify for DACA but didn't apply. Donald Trump has said that. But what he says that he wants in return is some immigration reform. All right, now the is question apparently is. Apparently, the Democrats aren't willing to Amy, do uh, A lot of people don't know why. But these people. Including, who, including a lot of immigration activists. To these be people who came here against, why does it have to be? I'll let them go. I'll let them get a pass to citizenship if you give me a wall. A wall is a wall. These are people. Why, why Larry, would you do it quid you pro quo? Um, and why? I actually don't. I agree with you 100%. Uh, but I don't think actually the point of debate is about the wall. The point of debate is about chain migration. That if you legalize this group of people, that process then creates chain migration, which Donald Trump, the president, has said he wants to reform. Democrats don't want to because that those are their future voters. They want chain migration. I think that's where the real battle is. Nate? This is what's so unfortunate about the immigration debate right now. It's such a more complicated issue than let's build a wall. That'll solve all our problems. And it's, it's really unfortunate that the president wants to waste government money, government resources on building a wall that our country does not need. Net immigration to, from Mexico right now is actually negative. We are losing more immigrants to Mexico than we are gaining. Uh, it's been steadily declining since 2007. We have absolutely no use for this wall. DACA needs to be um, put back in place. We need to find protections for the 1.6 million immigrants who are here and a pathway to citizenship for them. And then we should have a larger conversation afterwards about how we can improve our immigration system, not just ban everybody as the president wants to do. Amy, uh, the we... president, I just explained, doesn't want to ban people. In fact, he wants to create a path to legalization, both for DACA recipients and also people who would qualify for DACA. What the president has said to the other side is, and in return for that, we should have immigration reform so that this doesn't become a floodgate of chain migration, which a lot of Americans polling show uh, disagree with, by the way. They don't agree that you should have all of your extended family members coming on the strength of one person who's gotten legalization. That's Amy, Nate, wonderful having both of you with us. We love, <laughs> we'll call on you again. Thank you. Nate, great having you. We'll have you back, too. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. And thank you for joining me on this edition of Politicking. Remember, you can join the conversation on my Facebook page or tweet me at King Sings. And don't forget, use the Politicking hashtag. And that's all for this edition of Politicking. and dealing with lobbyists, so uh, uh, I still uh, want to get something back. Uh, I have a lot of great ideas, and uh, that's the way it's going to be. Okay, you've been encouraged by others to drop, uh, drop out in favor of Kelly Ward, a Tea Party favorite, Martha McSally, a member of the Congress who, and she's the preferred candidate of uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. You think it's going to be rough running against them? You know, I don't uh, go against my opponents. I always run a positive campaign. I always go to the people. I don't have people to endorse me, although presidents, guys running for president, 
the governors always want my endorsement, so I don't ask for endorsement. People know who I am. Uh, I'll compare my 58-year uh, resume uh, serving my country uh, versus my opponents. Uh, but uh, so I go on my resume, what I've done, my common sense, and uh, uh, what I feel I can bring uh, to our people here in Arizona and, and to the country and to the president. Do you expect, I know you don't ask for endorsements, one-on-one -on -one with the controversial former Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio on this edition of Politics. I'm Larry King. Joe Arpaio, the often controversial former sheriff of Maricopa County, Arizona, is back in the public eye, running for the U.S. Senate seat, being vacated by Jeff Flake, a frequent critic of Donald Trump, who, by the way, gave a full and complete pardon to Sheriff Arpaio after a contempt of court conviction. So does Arpaio expect Trump to campaign for him? Let's find out as Joe Arpaio joins us from Phoenix. Why are you running, Joe? Well, you know, I still have some life left, Larry, just like you do, <laughs> and I'm not going to surrender. Uh, one day uh, you'll find out the real story. It was a misdemeanor contempt of court, same as a barking dog. So I'll be getting into the uh, bias of the uh, federal court and the Department of Justice very soon. But uh, I want to keep doing uh, what I can to to uh, defend and help the people of Arizona and also to support the uh, president's policies agenda. Uh, and I'll be doing a, a one-termer. There'll be six years, and the president and I will probably be leaving at the same time. Now, many in your state, you know this, Joe, longtime Republican donors, they're publicly expressing concern that you bring some baggage and that if you win the nomination of your party, the party could be defeated in November. How do you react to that? Well, first of all, I've been around a long time, Larry. I've uh, I had the fortune it's, uh, to uh, uh, deal with you over the uh, years, and you've always been a fair guy. I always respected you. So I like to think that the people of Arizona and this country respect this uh, sheriff. I've uh, been sheriff 24 years, longest in the history of Maricopa County. Plus, you know my history with the federal government all over the world. So I have a lot to offer to go to Washington, not be a rubber stamp, uh, but still, uh, since I won't be running again, uh, I'm not going to make a career. So I don't have to be raising money the minute you get elected. Uh, other elements like Congress, Senate, and so on. Do you like, uh, do you dislike being compared to Judge Roy Moore? I don't even know what the con connection is. Well, they there. say you have the same political opinions as Judge Moore. You're, uh, you don't see any comparison? What, what political thing? I just uh, enforcing the laws. I've been around a long time uh, and enforcing the what I took an oath of office to do. So I haven't been, I'm not a one issue guy. On All illegal right. immigration. Let's get into some issues. Uh, the Russia investigation. Do you support any effort by the president to fire Robert Mueller? I can't make that decision right now. Uh, uh, he's going through situations that I am going through in, in indirectly that affects what's going on in Washington and his situation. So I'll be talking about that very soon. Uh, so I don't know. He's, uh, we should never underestimate the president. Uh, he's pretty good. But do you expect President Trump to endorse you as he endorsed more in Alabama? You know what? Uh, uh, I was with the president from day one, you know, in July of 2015. Yeah, I, I predicted I, I still I have great uh, uh, confidence and I, he's my hero, always will be. Not because of the party, and I didn't ask for that. That was a little misdemeanor to contempt of court. I'm not going to get into all of it right now, but you'll know very soon what the backdrop was on that. So uh, I support him. Uh, I know what he's going through is the same thing I'm going through, I have gone through. Uh, so I support him. I won't be a rubber stamp. If we have any problems, I'll go in the back room with him and we'll discuss those problems. But do you expect him to endorse you? I have no idea. 
Uh, I'm not asking for it, uh, but you know, if he did, it'd be an honor. Uh, but uh, uh, whether, that's a decision he has to make. He's got uh, big problems uh, in Washington fighting the bureaucracy and the swamp and everything else. So I don't know what deal making and what's going on uh, with him. And